international chess professionals converge in St. Louis for the 2017 Spring Chess Classic. Ben Simon here for the 2017 Spring Chess Classic in St. Louis. Now today, this is day two, not necessarily round two, because Group C is also playing their third round today. The six player double round robin will see a complete 10 rounds, while groups A and B are single round robins and will only see nine rounds played through Wednesday, May 24th. The 2017 Spring Chess Classic features a combined prize fund of more than 50 grand. Win the top prize in group A, that will get you $6,000. $4,000 is the prize for group B and the top prize for Group C is $5,000. That's because Group C is actually stronger than Group B. And after the second round in Group A, here he is, the man now on the board with a full point, Grandmaster Var Okobian. Var, congratulations on your victory against Daro Spirits. Uh, first time you guys had played and he took you into one big end game. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Yeah, it was very interesting. Uh, I had this position here, I played knight c6, and then I had to go back. So obviously here I should play something like f3, or, you know, maybe even get a bishop out. I'm not sure if this is such a great idea to take this pawn because of the rook g1 there. Perhaps even bishop a6. I think I like this positional sacrifice. If bishop g2, rook g1, and all sorts of tactics could happen on this open g file with a strong diagonal as well here. I kind of like this pawn sacrifice here. So I should have played like this. I think I have a, you know, you know, pretty nice position here, slight advantage for sure. So I played knight c6, queen e8, I had to go back, lost a bunch of tempos, and here I think position is equal. I think my opponent maybe instead of this knight d6, he should just go knight c3 and just, you know, force me to take and play this position. I don't think it's just equal here. So he played knight d6 and actually it became a little tricky for him because now I play this move b5 and now I have this outpost on c6, and uh, there are some small problems. It's still probably equal, but he was getting a long time, and uh, I think he went for this position thinking that this is just equal, but the knight is very poorly placed on a5. So rook a c1, take, take, rook c8, and now important move rook c3, because it's a fight for a c file here. If he takes, I take with the queen, I'm slightly better. And here there was a nice tactic, knight c6. Now he takes queen d6. And now the knight cannot move because c7 rook is hanging. And now I think white is pressing here. Uh, some serious advantage here. So I took, I did not want to take back with a pawn even though it looks natural because of the blockade he puts on c7. I didn't think I have that much here. You know, I can probably press this position but I like the, to have this because the king and uh, queen endgame is just lost. So because now the c pawn just queens. So that was the important factor. So he played h5, I played h4. And I now, if he just sits, I just want to move my king, improve my king, actually, because that was another sh possibility, like in that famous game, uh, Nigel Short versus Jan Timon. So if he just sits, I might be able to just improve my king. You know, and maybe, I'm not 100% I'm not sure, I was still going to think, but maybe I can even play like this. It's, it's not, uh, it's a possibility. Here, you know. So it's you know this this is very dangerous to play like this. It's just too passive. So Daro played uh, Queen B8, and now we get this end game, and uh, this is just you know it's basically maybe block somehow holds, but I think B pawn gives me good chances. We spent a lot of time analyzing. It seems like Black has good drawing chances, but move 40 at uh, he made a blunder here. This F5, and now. He allowed me to fix his pawn structure with f4. This is lost now. Should have played e5 here with some drawing chances. So this is all normal. I think everything was played correctly. And I obtained the winning position. Uh, here actually there are several ways to win. Rook a7 wins. We analyzed rook c7 probably wins. Original thought was to play rook c7, but <coughs> I thought this is also winning, which is. I just want to. <coughs> so here, I thought, <coughs> if he doesn't do anything, my king simply simply uh, walks to c7 and I promote my pawn. So king e6 is met by king c5, so he's not in time to win the pawn. So he played g5, last try. I played king c5, strong move, because now I want to go rook check and put the rook on b6. 
and just promote the pawn. So played king b6, rook c7, and this was a terrible move, rook c7. I thought there is no difference, rook c7, but in fact, I should just play rook d7 with the same purpose, rook d6, rook b6. If he captures any of my pawns, it's a typical idea of blockading the rook and the, the pawn just queens. So the difference now, in, in the game he had a check. Now if he gives me a check, this is completely losing because I go here. Now if he, if he goes check, I just go here, check, go here. Because here actually I can give a check, push the king back and king comes here and I queen the pawn. I get the same position in the game but like uh, a few tempos ahead. So this 97 was uh, a real mistake that could have, uh, rook c7 was a mistake that could have cost me the game because now I'm probably still winning, but I had to play very precisely. Check, push the king to the back rank. Looks like this is still winning after all, but I definitely gave chances, you know, but luckily I'm, I'm still in time to win this. This is a nice moment here. King h4 is just losing after rook f3, but this is interesting. If he goes here, I go rook f3, queen, Take, 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 I take. And now, uh, this is very important that I'm winning this position by a tempi here. So he's just not in time to have king f5 and this wins. So yeah, this is the game. Well, Darrow actually played in the Winter Classic a couple of months ago and he did pretty well for himself. I saw when he came downstairs with you before you started analyzing, he, uh, he seemed a little confused about something. What was he asking you? Um, he, uh, we were thinking whether or not he had a chance here. There was a line here uh, in this end game because this is the only moment where he had some chances because of my blunder in the end game. So he was thinking maybe king e5 here, but it looks like it's still losing after all. So king e5, rook f1, f4 takes king e2, and and uh, yeah, I just I just uh, win here because of the same idea. Actually, yeah, this is uh, yeah, just winning. Awesome. By an excess. So yeah, I, I think overall it was. I'm lucky that after that blunder, rook c7. Yeah, I just uh, uh, I had a similar uh, mistake in a game against Sam Shankland in the US Championship where I was completely winning and they made a move that eventually position became draw. I still managed to win because Sam blundered at the end. But I mean, it seems like it's just a little bit of a trend now. You know, you know, back to back and getting winning position, but not playing the, the, the clean technique, so I'm a little bit annoyed about that, you know. But, you know, I think I was still winning at least, I think. I have to go home and check, but. All right. Yeah. And speaking of home, now making it home in St. Louis. Yes, Kreef yes, St. Louis, Creef Core, yeah, about 15 minutes away from the chess club, and uh, happy to be here, you know. I want to play chess, so I think this is the place to be, you know, for the chess players. He really is happy to be here. Actually, Var, you were, I remember telling you this, this was, uh, you told me about the series, the the classic series, yeah, before yeah. I even knew about it. Yeah, I, I actually discovered it on the website. I saw, you know, I didn't know what it was, yeah. but uh, uh, I discovered this, and then I think the first one was already full. I couldn't play, but then I asked uh, uh, Tony Rich to play in this one, and he, he invited me to play here. Yeah, well, it's quite the series. Now let's take a look. After two full rounds have been played, the standings for Group A. After today, Group A is led by Alexander Ipatov and Georgian player Georgi Kachasvili at one and a half each. Tomorrow, in round three, Kachasvili takes the black pieces against world junior champion Jeffrey Zhang. In Group B action, from Brazil, Grandmaster Alexander Fier joins me right now. He was victorious today against the former U.S. junior closed chess champion Akshat Chandra. Congratulations on your victory, Alexander. Uh, welcome to St. Louis, by the way. Is this your first tournament you've played here? Yes, this is the first tournament I play here, and this is the first time in the United States also. Very so. cool. <laughs> well, I hope your experience so far has been good. Yeah, yeah, I had, some, I had some days to take a look around, and then everything was great so far. Good. So nothing to complain. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing, actually, because so many times the players come here, and all they're doing is playing chess, and they don't get time to really go to the zoo or go mm. look around, so that is really cool. Um, take us through this game you had with Akshat today. Uh, well, he decided to take on f2, that should be also okay, but uh, at least now I have some, I have some play. You know? this, his king is a bit exposed, he doesn't have the bishop pair anymore. And uh, I decided that I have a good setup with c4, knight c3, which was better than to try knight d2, knight a3 to go to c4, because uh, 
he can defend easily with bishop e6 or bishop a6. So c4, I think it's good. And here, I think he needs to do something fast before I, I finish to to develop my pieces. No, so I thought he would go queen b6 here, and I think it's good for blacks too. Because okay, rook f2 defend upon on b2, and here f5. Yep, six no, f5. And uh, well, if I take on f5, just rook f5, and he's going to change on f2 and take on b2. So I thought something like knight c3, but anyway, he can take and uh, take on f2. And uh, he's going to win a pawn, I think. So still, I think it should be better for black anyway. But after bishop e6, then I, I was happy because position kind of consolidated. And um, if he goes something like queen d4 here, I can go knight a3, and uh, later the knight can go to c2 and e3. So the position, I, I was really happy here that uh, uh, I thought I was not worth anymore. So he went rook d8, and uh, knight a4 looks natural, and I go over the c5 square, that is quite important for me. So, since he was going to time trouble and I was not sure what to play, I decided to go queen c5 because he needs to make a big decision here if he's going to change and enter in a, a worse endgame or if he's going for queen g5 and trying to mate but sacrificing the pawn on a7. And uh, I thought he would go queen g5 and h4 or something like that and I was not sure about the position but looks like white, white can hold here because uh, the queen is defending well the dark squares and but i think black still has counterplay here something with rook h8 i don't know or maybe some f5 it's it's still unclear but uh, the end game is pleasant for me because okay i have a simple plan that is just to push this queen side pounds and um, it's hard for black to do something against it you know i would like to bring my king to a3 first but if uh, if he brings his king to the queen side, uh, I think there are more chances to hold. So I just went before and uh, and a four and b five. It, it's quite straightforward plan. No? So he was slightly on time trouble, right? I thought maybe he would try something with rook d four here, but um, anyway, I have I can take and rook d one and after rook d eight, knight b three. I think it's good. Uh, if bishop e6, I can probably take on d4, and uh, the end game should be good for me because he has no good way to defend the c6 pawn. And uh, if d3, I can just bring the king, and uh, probably this pawn is going to, to fall at some point. So, but I, I thought he would do something like this because the, the way it went, uh, I, I just promoted the pawn basically, you know. He still has some chances to, to take here and to try bishop e6. And uh, I think he can have some chances to hold, but maybe I can, I can change probably and to play something like b6. It's still quite tricky for him. And uh, well, I have easy plan to play b7, rook b1, a6, something like that. No? So he went bishop e6, and after b6, which I think it's maybe the only move but it's a good one it, it works and the point is if like if he takes does, doesn't change much because uh, I was I'm always going to get uh, the position with uh, the pawn on b7 and I'm going to play rook d1 anyway and then going to rook d7 so there is no good plan for black to do anything against it so doesn't matter much if he changed the pawn or not and not, and not really using the a5 for the moment so he took on c4 and takes and rook c1 and I think here is just just winning because b7 and rook d1 is coming on next and rook d7. He tried to create some counterplay on the center, but um, it was it's not enough. Uh, I can just take the pawn and come back and I still have my rook c7, rook c8 plans, or even I can go king e5, rook d2, and a6, something something like this. So he resigned. Well, very cool, <laughs> Alexander Fear. Congratulations, <laughs> man, uh, and. Hopefully this tournament keeps on going your way. One and a half out of two so far, and as we speak at the top of the leaderboard, of course, it's still very early. Um, how did you become involved with this tournament? And what did you, uh, this is your first time here. When did you get the invite? How did you get connected with St. Louis? Well, it was like some months ago that Alejandro talked with me that they were going to make this tournament and they were thinking about inviting me. 
and uh, totally it was great i've never been to united states and would be a good experience to be in like the main city of chess now no? so i was quite happy but uh, i still had to do the visa so it was a lot of logistics to do it but it went all right <laughs> well there you go alejandro ramirez thank you very much so let's take a look at the standings after round number two in group b Round two saw every single game in Group B be a decisive one, with three players sitting atop the leaderboard at two each. Tomorrow's game of the day looks to be a Wonder Liang, with the white pieces taking on JJ Ali Morandi. Grandmaster Samuel Sevian stands in clear first in Group C. Today, he had two big victories and is the first player in any of the fields to stand alone at the top. Tomorrow's game of the day in Group C, let's stay with Sam as he plays black against Rufeng Li. Stay with us through Wednesday, May 24th, as every round begins at 1 p.m. with the exception of the final day. See the move by move live as it happens at chess24.com and uschesschamps.com.